We are uh, going to uh, feed ourselves, as most of you have been in healing school before. Well, you're in it again. And we're going to take the Word of God and just feed our spirit, feed our faith. How, how does faith come? By hearing and hearing by the Word. And uh, we are going to have great faith rise up in us. And we're going to take great healing. And we're not just going to believe for ourselves, but we're going to believe for one another, for the healing power of God to be manifest in every person that's believing to be healed today. Amen? Glory to God. And, you know, you can take healing power when you feel good. In fact, that's a good thing to do, is just walk in that healing anointing and that healing peace. Thank you, Lord, that I'm healed and well and every symptom's gone of sickness and disease. You know, take it. That's what we talked about yesterday. Faith takes it. It what? Whatever it wants that's in, a, in agreement with the written word of God or with the spoken word to, your, to you individually. So, so it's an awesome thing. Ken and I have been doing this, walking in this a long time. And, uh, you know, it just gets better. You never get tired of, you never get tired of walking in the blessing. Man, man. Glory to God. And the blessing is always increasing. You might just be starting out and you think, well, I'm, I'm not seeing much blessing. Well, it's because you've got such a lousy attitude. <laughs> That's not the way you get blessed. You get blessed by receiving what the Word says about the blessing and saying, I'm blessed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about uh, healing today. Let's just feed our faith. And we'll start with, uh, we'll start with Proverbs 3. Glory to God. I, I enjoy healing school because I enjoy people getting healed. And so we'll feed ourselves with the word concerning God's goodness and mercy and his healing anointing. And then we'll just receive it. How's that? How's that for a good thing to do? Glory to God. So Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. Let's, let's look at that. This is the key to everything, your prosperity, your marriage, your family. My son, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, my son, forget not my law or teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Now that just that one verse would put people on the road to victory and keep you there. Let your heart listen. Don't forget what you find out. I mean, don't forget what you're preached. Don't forget what you're taught from the Word of God. Don't let it go through your head. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it in your mind. Keep it in your heart so that it talks to your mind and to your will and to your emotions. Forget not my law or teaching. Forget not the Word of God, but let your heart keep my commandments. Here's the result. Big deal. Big result. For a length of days and years of a life worth living and tranquility or peace inward and outward and listen to this part. After you hit 70, this is a really good part. Continuing through old age till death. Well, I like to say continuing through old age to departure. You realize that's what death is for us. Whether we go before the great snatch or whether we go individually, it's a departure. What happens when somebody dies? Well, you leave your body. You, you're not dead. You leave, and the body's dead. And they'll, you know, I was at a funeral the other day, and there was the body all laid out. You know, you might look better after you leave than you did while you were here. Because they'll get you a new outfit. They'll have somebody come in, do your hair, put your makeup on, and you'll just look so peaceful. Why do you look so peaceful? Because you're gone. <laughs> but you're, you're not gone forever. You're just absent. You're just absent from that box. To be absent from the body is to be present 
Don't forget that. To be absent is to be present. To be absent is to be present with the Lord. So we don't have anything to fear in death, but we do want to live out the full number of our days because that's, we've got work to do. Glory to God. God's put a lot into you. He's put a big investment of time and, and insight and revelation and gifts that are in you. And you need to stay until you're finished. Now, when you're finished, you can leave, but not before. Amen? So we want to live out the full number of our days for ye length of days, years of a life worth living. Now, that's a big part, isn't it? This Amplified Translation is awesome. Life worth living. You don't want to be somewhere with somebody having to spoon feed you and change your diaper. You want to have life worth living all the days of your life. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Peaceful, joyous, happy, living in abundance. Don't plan to decrease when you get old financially. Who's, who's blessed you anyway? God. He's not decreasing because you're 60, 70, 80, 100, 110. No, I plan to increase all the days of your life. You say, well, I just don't see how that could happen. Well, you're not in faith. That's why you can't see it. You look at the Word and you'll see it. Tranquility, inward, outward, and continuing. This I like this part. Through old age till departure or to death, and I, and which is our departure. Isn't that great? Yeah. Continuing through old age. So... When I get to, well, I am 70. When I get to be 80, I don't think I'm going to decrease. I'm going to continue through old age walking with God. I'm going to live by faith. I'm going to prosper. I'm going to be in health. And when, it's, when I've lived out my full number of days, I'm going to leave. But to be absent is to be present. So I'm not ever going to be absent. I'm going to be absent from the body, but I'm going to be present with the Lord. Amen. Think about it. Glory to God. I'm telling you, it's an awesome life that we live. We can live our life free from fear of death. We can live our life without sickness and disease. We can live our life in abundance with our needs met. We can live in peace. We can have love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All the days of our lives. That's the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the reborn Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm excited about it this morning. I get excited about these things. In Jesus' name, Lord, we praise you. Now, I'm talking about long life today, and uh, we're just going to, and healing. So I'm going to go over some scriptures, and the first thing I'm going to do, though, is read a footnote in Psalm 90 from the Amplified Bible. I believe it's in the Amplified that I'm looking. This just kind of explains a lot to me, and it's a really great piece of information. Psalm 90 says, uh, I'll read it to you in the Amplified. Our iniquities, our secret heart and its sins, that's verse 8 in the Amplified, which we would like to, so, we would so like to conceal even from ourselves, you have set in the light of your countenance. Here, verse 9. For our days out here in this wilderness. Now, that this was in the wilderness, and Moses was talking to them. For your days out here in this wilderness, says Moses, pass away in your wrath. He's talking to the Lord. He's saying our days out here in the wilderness pass away in your wrath. Why? Because they were disobedient. They didn't do what God told them to do. And so they suffered for it. God wasn't punishing them. It was just that they weren't doing what he said do, so they weren't getting what he wanted them to receive. Amen? They didn't get punished. They just didn't receive. They wouldn't receive. They wouldn't obey. The, now here it is. The days of our years are three score and ten, or 70 years, or even if by reason of strength, Four score, 80 years. 
Yet in their pride in additional years, only labor, labor in sorrow, for it is soon gone and we fly away. The days of our years shall be uh, 70 or 80 years. Now in the footnote of the Amplified, it says, This psalm is, created, uh, is credited to Moses, who is interceding with God to remove the curse which made it necessary for every Israelite over 20 years of age. Now this was just really for the Israelites. They wouldn't go into the promised land. They wouldn't obey God, and this was the result. Uh, for every Israelite over 20 years of age, when they rebelled against God at Kadesh Barnea to die before reaching the promised land. That would be Numbers 14, 26 through 35. You'd find that. Moses says, most of them are dying at 70 years of age. This number has often been mistaken as a set span of life for all mankind. 70 or 80 years. Haven't you heard that? How many of you have heard that? Well, you know, we, we got 70 or 80 years. No, that's not right, because we're not one of these uh, disobedient Israelites. This number's often been mistaken as a set span of life for all mankind. It, it, it was not intended to refer to anyone, and you can plainly see this in the Scripture, except those Israelites under the curse during that particular 40 years. Now listen to this. Seventy years has never been the average lifespan of humanity. That's never been the average lifespan. When Jacob, the father of 12 tribes, the 12 tribes had reached 130 years, Genesis 47, 9, he complained that he had not attained to the years of his immediate ancestors. He got to 130, and he said, this is not long enough. My, my people before me live longer than this. He, was, he thought he ought to have more time, not less time. And it says, uh, that, that's 47.9 in Genesis. He complained that he had not attained to the years of his immediate ancestors. In fact, Moses himself lived to be 120 years old, and Aaron, 123, and Miriam, year, uh, several years older, yo, older. So she outlived Moses. And Joshua, 110 years old. So 70 couldn't be a, a set lifespan unless you believe for it. And I don't believe for that because I'm past 70, so forget that. <laughs> Notice well that in the millennium, a person dying at 100 years of old age uh, will still be thought of as a child. Isn't that cool? That's, uh, if you want to see that, that's in Isaiah 65, 20. So we have a long lifespan, hallelujah. And if you say, well, phooey, I was hoping to get out of here pretty quick. No, you're not doing it right if, you're, if that's the way you feel. Just get in the perfect will of God and let the blessing flow and get into things you're called to do that God's put on you to do and life will be good, and it'll be worth living. I'm looking forward to, to going to heaven myself, but I, I'm not eager to get out of here because it's pretty good right here. I mean, we can walk in heaven's blessing while we're in the earth. We don't have to put it off till we go to heaven. Glory to God. So what do we want to do? We want to live out the full number of our days, and we want to finish our course. We don't want to deal to sickness, disease, or one thing or another, accidents or whatever, and, and be cut short in life because we have work to do. You say, well, I don't know what my work is. Well, you need to find out what God wants you to do with your life and finish it. We're finishers, glory to God. We don't start something and not finish it. We're going to walk out the will of God and we're going to be blessed and we're going to be strong and well and healed just like God has put a, made it possible for us. How can we be healed in a day like this when they keep coming up with new diseases and new things we never heard of and horrible things and people are dying of this and that or the other? Well, here's how we get healed.
Here's how we are healed. It's, it's really not that you have to get healed. It's how, it's how you have to receive healing. One of our key verses, of course, is, and we'll probably might read it several times, but I'll just read it now since it came up. Isaiah 53, where it talks about what Jesus did on the cross. We see that we do not have to be sick. This is not something you don't know, but it might be something you need to believe. Surely, in the Amplified, Isaiah 53, 4 says, Surely, it's a fact. Surely, it is true. He has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses. This is probably the most important healing scripture you can depend on. He has done it. He has borne our sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, carried our sorrows and pains, and yet we considered him, we ignorantly, the Amplified says, considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. So they, they considered him afflicted by God, you know, and it was like his fault or something. How could he... How could he, he must not have been who we thought he was or he wouldn't die. No, he took, he took my sicknesses and diseases. Jesus himself took our distresses, our pains. He took it. If he took it, I don't got to have it. Verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions, our sins. I don't have to have sin in my life. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement necessary or needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. I'm healed this morning. I'm healed this morning. You're healed this morning. It's been done. It's a done deal here. Glory to God. And we get peace and well-being. We get to be made whole. We have our sins and griefs, griefs, griefs. Grief's not of God. I mean, I know when you lose somebody, grief is there, but don't let it live there. Get rid of it. Say, well, I'm moving on now. Because whoever you lost, they've moved on. Hopefully, they moved on to a better place. And you think, yeah, but I know my brother didn't know God. You don't know any such thing. You don't know what that brother did before he left or what appeared to him or what message he got. You don't know. Here's what you do know. You do know what you can do. You do know that you can fulfill the number of your days in the will of God and live out your life in the will of God and serve God. You can live right, talk right, be right, do right, say right, and you can live long. Read right. Read the Bible. Take the Bible, literally. He took death for us. He took sickness for us. He took pain for us. Jesus himself. Why, why did he go through all those things? Why did he take all that? Because his job from the Father was to bear the curse for me and for you. He bore it for me. He bore it for you. And that wasn't just a Sunday school term. He took it. He took every, the Bible teaches us, he took every sickness and every disease, every pain that had come to man through sin and the fall, and the treason that happened in the garden, Jesus took it back in himself and set you and me free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I'm a free woman today. You're a free woman. You're a free man today. You don't have to be bound by drugs, alcohol, or sin, or any sickness and disease, or any pain. All the bad has been done away with through Jesus Christ. Doesn't that make you grateful today? Aren't you grateful? Oh, man, I, I like living well. I like, Ken and I go to the doctor for checkups, but 
we're always well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We go to a believing doctor, too. I'm not going to go to an ungodly doctor. So it's a good thing to serve God. And, and here is, uh, you know, we've been, we've been walking with the Lord for a lot of years. And uh, here would be my advice in a nutshell. Do everything you can do to obey God. Find out everything you can find from the Word of God, how to live, what to do, how to talk, what pleases God, and what does not please God. And you'll prosper. You'll increase all the time. You'll be healed. You'll live in peace. You don't have to live in fear, anxiety, worried. We believe God. We believe we're healed. We believe it from based on the Word of God. It's a fact. Jesus himself, say himself. himself. Bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. Bore our sicknesses, carried our diseases. Bore the chastisement of our peace. What's that saying to us? That we don't have to worry. We don't have to let our mind be all unsettled about this thing or that thing or what the government's doing or what this is happening or whatever. No, no, no. We have peace. How could we have peace in such a tumultuous world? Because Jesus gave us peace. And he suffered the penalty that it takes to make peace available to me and you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So all of us, we, we can live without fear. We can live in the blessing. We can always be increasing. The only thing we have to do is one thing, but it entails quite a lot. We have to obey God. I'm getting excited about the Word of God. I like to see people get healed. In 2004, she had a massive heart attack. The whole left side of her heart was just severely injured. And so she had been standing on the Word, listening to you preach about healing, believing God for Christ it, confessing God. it, and she was believing that as she came here, she'd be healed. Only thing was, she had an appointment with her doctor Thursday before she left to come. Well, her doctor took a look at her Thursday before she even got here, and the doctor <laughs> said her heart was completely healed. testimony before no matter what the devil was telling me in my head I just kept on putting it on the um, chemical ministry and every morning I was watching it every morning one day I said to myself, something is wrong. Something is really wrong. So when Kenneth and Gloria Copeland was on TV, she was talking about healing and she was talking about um, believing that you were healed and repeat um, after her the healing scripture. And I kept on saying, by his stripes I am healed. When I went to the hospital, they pulled me in there. And before I knew it, they were taking me to, um, to critical care, hooking me up on everything. And he comes down, here comes the doctor in the room saying, you have had a massive heart attack. And I said to him, who? Oh. Those were my exact words. And he said, you. I said, no, not me. I am healed. So Thursday, when I went to the doctor before coming to the convention, they wanted to talk about putting another stent in because the arteries kept closing. And when I went into that doctor's office, he came in the room and he said to me, is that you, Miss Berry? And I said, yes. He said, if you could only see how your heart looked in 2004, it was not pushing the oxygen through the way we wanted it to. So I can't believe, he said, I can't believe that your heart is brand new. I said, I'm on my way to Branson, Missouri to receive more healing because you have to know that God works. And he told his nurse, he said, God works. Miss Berry is healed. She was really, really in a bad shape. When we have chest pains or when we have doubt, 
um, we need to pick up our Bible and just, just like they ask us to do, just like God wants us to do, just like his ministry helpers are out here doing, Kenneth Copeland and Gloria, um, believe that. Because believing it, it works. It works. For more than 30 years, Gloria Copeland has taught God's word on health and healing. And now she wants to help you learn how to receive your healing. God wants you well, and he wants you to experience life free from sickness, disease, and pain. Through the Receive Your Healing Package, you can renew your mind as you learn what God's health plan is for you. You can even discover how to override health issues that run in the family. This package by Gloria Copeland includes a book, God's Will for Your Healing, the six CD Healing School series, and Healing Confessions CD to activate the healing power of God through the spoken word. Also included is Brother Kenneth Copeland's prescription healing brochure to help keep God's prescription for health in front of your eyes. You don't have to wait any longer. Take part in God's health plan today. Side effects include a healthy body, freedom from pain, renewed outlook from God's Word. They may also include joy, peace, restful sleep, and boundless energy. Order the Receive Your Healing Package for $24.99 and enjoy a special savings of 45%. Simply log on to kcm.org slash TV special and request your package today. Transform your overall health and well-being through the Word of God. Live out the full numbers of your days in health and peace. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. For this and other products on healing by Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org. Order today. What a great testimony. Now I'm going to pray for your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person that has any kind of heart difficulty or problem right now. And in the name of Jesus, I command your hearts to be made whole, to be healed in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Now you take it, you take it, you, you take it and you say, my heart is healed. I am healed. And don't say anything else but healing. Glory to God. Our next healing school will be at Southwest BC and you want to be there. That's in Fort Worth, Texas. Bring people if you need, if they need prayer, we'll be there praying for people. It's July the 1st through the 6th. Healing School is Saturday morning, July the 6th. This is a place to hear the Word, build your faith, receive your healing. Admission is free. Bring your family, bring your friends. We'll have room for you. And for more information, go to kcm.org. This is Gloria Copeland reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Continue to grow in God's Word and build your faith. This week's Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Receive God's great grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing.